All right, let's learn about multiplexers and decoders. We need some entrance music here. Here we go. Yeah, the reason I wanted to have entrance music is because we're learning about multiplexers and decoders, and I've always thought that multiplexer sounds kind of like a wrestling move, and since wrestlers always have their music play when they come running out from backstage, I figured I'd have to have my music play as we learn about multiplexers and decoders. So a multiplexer, this is a really cool circuit that allows you to use a signal to decide which of some other number of signals is going to be the signal that passes through. Now, this sounds complicated. It's actually easy and beautiful and elegant. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We've got two signals, A and B, and then we've got, and they're both one bit. We've got a one bit select bit, and that's going to select which of those signals passes through. So when the select bit is zero, we don't care what B is. We want A, the first signal, signal number zero, to pass through to the output. And similarly, when the select bit is 1, I don't care about A at that point. I just want to make sure that B is what passes through. So when the select bit 0, I want the first signal. When the select bit 1, I want the second signal. It's actually fairly easy to figure out what this looks like in terms of a truth table. The output signal is A times the inverse of S plus B times S. That's a multiplexer. We're going to build that in Logisim in a second. Let me show you a decoder. A decoder, you have a two-bit signal. So S0 and S1, those are the two bits. And you've got four output signals. Now, these output signals can also be either 0 or 1. But if the input bits are both 0, 0, we want output bit 0 to be true, everything else to be false. If it's 0, 1, we want output bit 1 to be true, everything else false, and so on. And you can think of this as like, well, 0, 0, that's like the number 0. We would want the 0 width of the output bits to be active. 0, 1, that's the number 1 in binary. We'd want the first of the output bits to be active, and so on. So there's sort of four possibilities for arranging these two 1-bit input signals and each of those corresponds to exactly one of the output bits to make that bit true and everything else at that point will be zero. And you can sort of see this is what the truth tables are going to look like for each of those, uh, sorry, not the truth tables, the Boolean algebra for each of those output bits. So that's kind of a quick intro to multiplexers and decoders. Now what I'm going to do is actually try to build this in Logisim on the fly without even having practiced it. Let's see if we can totally pull this off. Let's start with the multiplexer. So let's see how this goes. So we've got A and not B, or B, uh, or sorry, A and not, A. okay, I can, I can totally do this. Let's try this. Okay, so we've got a new circuit. Let's get our two input bits. So we've got A, we've got B. By convention for multiplexers, you always put the um, uh, the select bit. Typically, you put it on the bottom facing up. Um, we, now, we need some AND gates. And for these AND gates, we only want two inputs, and I'll make them narrow gates. So I got one there, and uh, I'll put another one here. We're going to need an OR gate, which, again, only needs two inputs, and I'll also make it, well, I'll make this one... I'll make this one medium. There we go, so I can connect this stuff up. Uh, we're going to have our output uh, here. So that's our output bit. We've got our two input bits. And remember, uh, let's line this up. Let's see. That's There we go. A. And uh, we want this to be not S. Oh, this isn't connected. Okay, so we need a not. There we go. Fantastic. Oh, well, whatever. I'll erase that. Okay, good. So this is uh, A. This is our select bit. Um, and you can sort of see uh, if this is 1, that's what's going through. If this is 0, not so much. Um, and then down here, this is actually, this is even easier. In fact, let's just move this up to here. We'll connect these up. 
and then we'll uh, split off there. Perfect. Okay, good. This is actually done. Watch this. Um, when the select bit is zero, what's going to pass through is just whatever the input A is. So when this is zero, essentially the select bit being zero, that's going to make sure that it doesn't matter what we do with B. Um, because this is an AND gate and this is going to be zero, we can never get a zero out of this AND gate, which means it can't affect this OR. So when the select bit is zero, B is effectively just sort of deactivated. Now also when the select bit is zero, that's saying that we're going to invert that and send it into this AND gate. So the output of this AND gate is going to be totally dependent on A. If A is one, we get a one out. If A is zero, we get a zero out. So when the select bit is zero, the output bit is completely determined by A. Now when it's one, this reverses, right? So now this is true. So now the output down here is completely dependent upon B, and because this gets inverted, doesn't matter what I do to A, uh, not going to affect uh, the output at all, right? And so that is a uh, multiplexer. We're using this one-bit signal to select which of these two one-bit signals um, is going to pass through. Now what's fantastic about a um, multiplexer, we can actually use this in a variety of situations, and it doesn't only have to be one bit. If we had a two select bits, that would allow us to select between four different signals, right? Because two select bits, there's four possibilities, um, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So that could select between four possible input bits. Uh, and if we had three bit signal, that would let us select between eight possible input bits, um, and so on. So it's a pretty cool thing that we can do with this multiplexer. Now I should mention, if we go in here, is this under gates? No, it's under plexers. There we go. Multiplexer, we can actually say, well, I want one select bit and one uh, data bit. And in fact, the multiplexer is so commonly used, you can see that it's it's basically a component. So we could, we could plug this in. We could have, uh, let's make these face east. We could have two uh, one bit signals, we'll put those in there, we'll get another one of these, we'll have this face north, uh, this is, looks like the select bit, that's, uh, here we go, input bit, input bit, um, there we go, yep, yep, there we go, yeah, there we go, that is a, now what does this do? It looks like there's like a little extra thing down here. Can we connect something to that? What, what's going on with this? This is interesting. What is that? Oops. Oh, I guess we can't. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's, there's like some, doesn't it just look like there's some, I don't know what that is. Well, anyway, it could be like an error with how it's drawing. I don't really know. But yeah, multiplexer, very, very common component. And one of the cool things about the multiplexer, we actually don't, need to only have one data bit. So like suppose we actually want 32-bit values to pass through. So we'll have this face east, but we actually want to select between two different BAM. There's one of them. Um, we want this to have 32-bit data bits. Ah, crap. And then this would need to be itself 32 bits. There we go. Uh, we'll copy paste that we'll put another one of these here we'll have to connect up to it uh, perfect there we go so now you know I don't know we'll make this like so yeah check it out and this could be one and we're selecting between those two now so actually with a multiplexer a one bit select bit selects between two different inputs those inputs don't have to just be one bit inputs they actually could be 32-bit inputs. Now, of course, there's a question, well, how are we going to implement this? You know, if we just think, well, we're only able to do this for one bit here. Well, what we're actually going to do is sort of, this does this like pairwise. We're actually going to have a splitter that's going to split each of these 32 bits out and split each of these 32 bits out, send them all into the gates uh, one bit at a time, uh, combine everything together. It's kind of a big pain in the butt to do, so you know, no worries about that. Uh, you can kind of imagine what it would look like, but there we go. We've got a multiplexer which can select between two different 
signals, and those signals can be any number of bits as long as the multiplexer uh, is, whoops, here we go, is set to take the proper number of data bits to what it has for inputs and for outputs. So that is a multiplexer. Uh, I'll go ahead and rename this to MUX, which is the abbreviation that you'll sometimes see for multiplexer. Now let's make another circuit. We'll call it DEC for decoder. Now if we switch back to here, you remember the decoder, we're going to have a 2-bit signal, and then we're going to have four possible uh, output signals. Um, so let's go ahead and give this a try. So we're going to have, this will be output bit 1, this will be output bit 2, this will be output bit 3, this will be output bit 4, and we're going to have our 2-bit input. I'm going to, just to, for simplicity, I'm going to use essentially two 1-bit inputs. And if you remember here, this output bit O is going to be the knot of these two things anded together. That's not so bad to do. We've got now, nah, that actually looks, uh, that looks perfect. We'll connect that up. Oops. Uh, that looks great. Now we'll go ahead and uh, connect up. And we want to knot both of these. So we'll put a knot gate there. We'll put a NOT gate here, we'll put plug that in, and we will plug that in. Fantastic. So when these are both zero, uh, we get a one there, but then otherwise, um, otherwise we don't. Perfect. Okay, now we're basically going to do the same thing for these other gates. Let me plug that in, we'll move this back. Um, so now for this one, this would have to be zero, one which means that we're going to not just the top of it, but not the rest of it. Uh, let's see how that works. Okay, so now, uh, right, 0, 1, selects this one. Perfect. Let's do another one. Uh, this, we're going to put the knot down here. And then, of course, for the last one, as you can probably imagine, we're not going to knot anything at all. So we'll connect this up. We'll take this down. We'll connect this up. Perfect. Uh, let's see. This is going to be, I think that's that one. And I think this down here will be this one. Okay, good. Let's see. 0, 0 selects the first one. 0, 1 selects the second one. 1, 0 selects the third one. Uh, 1, 1 selects the fourth one. So there we go. Now you can think about what's happening. These two bits here represent a binary number, and we're decoding that binary number and saying it's either 0, 1, 2, or 3. Exactly one of these will be lit up, no less, no more, which will tell us what this binary number is. That is called a decoder. And um, once again, you can imagine this is doing it with two bits, if you had a 3-bit decoder, you would need to have 8 outputs because with the 3 bits, uh, they, they call the 3 to 8 decoder. This is sometimes called a 2 to 4 decoder, so you can have a 3 to 8 decoder. Those 3 bits could select between 8 different output signals. You could also have a 4 to 16 decoder and a 5 to 32 decoder and so on. It's selecting, essentially, it's decoding this binary number and telling us what... Um, uh, what that binary number was. So there we go. Multiplexer uh, and a decoder. Fantastic. Woohoo!